Hi, I'm Alistair Gregg from Fastman. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is the first of three uh, webinars we're running this week in conjunction with Open Text World uh, here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And for those of you who are able to join us here, welcome and look forward to spending some time with you through the conference. For those of you who are not able to attend uh, and have seen watching this uh, video uh, from afar, um, we look forward to seeing you again soon. This is a pretty exciting event for us because it's the first in-person open text conference that we've had for about three years. So uh, here we are. And for this conference, we have got some good announcements and some new product releases, which we're very excited to bring to you. And the first of them we're going to present here today, which is our BDM CE or Bulk Data Manager CE release. And this has been released in conjunction with Open Text World. So uh, what I'm going to talk about now is a little bit about the positioning and the reason for the product, the, what, the reason why the product exists in the first place. I'm going to be joined by David Henshaw, who's going to do a short demonstration of the of the new product. And for those of you who are familiar with uh, Bulk Data Manager itself, uh, the traditional product, you'll see a lot of familiarity. Really, nothing's changed as far as the user interface is concerned. And a lot of the new release uh, new features are about uh, making it more versatile and more um, applicable for different deployment models and scenarios, and also bringing it up to date with some of the authentication uh, methods that are available now or are required now in a modern world uh, with the cloud deployments and so on. So let's move along and we'll have a look at the um, at the product. We'll talk about the positioning. Um, and over the next uh, couple of days, there's going to be a couple more of these webinars and they're going to be talking about our DocuSign digital signature solutions and process automation with again with some nice little demos. And after that, there will be a permissions and access control presentation, which is talking about our solutions on the permissions and access control side of things. So let's move along. Okay, so um, I shall just make a move. Uh, so you, you would know that Fastman is uh, focused on security and the integrity of enterprise information. So we do that through a variety of, of uh, services and products that we've been offering for a long time in the market and are widely deployed around the world. Uh, the ones that we're going to talk about today are focused on our data transformation uh, suite, which is Bulk Data Manager, the Extract tool, uh, and a couple of other products like Bridge Connector and so on. So today we're going to focus on data transformation. And in particular, we're going to talk about, as I said, about Bulk Data Manager. So we're very excited about this new release. The guys have been working hard to make sure that it's available for this new for this conference and presented uh, at, on time at the conference. So we look forward to, to getting some feedback and hope you enjoy it. Um, Let's start with the reason why the product exists in the first place. Uh, you will you will all understand that uh, content uh, content services systems these days are complex. So it's not uh, the simplistic situation that we used to have years ago, where we had a you know a, a sort of a, a, a an isolated repository which wasn't connected to other systems too much. Maybe it was through some simple API connections and so on. But these days, the data in those systems is, is the systems themselves are complex. The data structures themselves are also complex. Data has been sourced from a number of different locations across your organization and brought in through you know, structured methods like the extended ECM connectors and so on. And uh, the volumes have gone up uh, uh, hugely. So in the old days, we would be dealing with uh, 300, 400, 500 megabytes, sorry, and then maybe into the gigabytes. And now it's not unusual. Some of our customers are running you know, several tens of, of terabytes. So. 10, 20, 30, I've got one customer that's talking about doing 50 or 60 terabytes of data into their content suite system. So, and they're using Bulk Data Manager to do that. So it's a, it's certainly a lot larger and a lot more complex environment than it used to be uh, in the past. And we have to change with that. So the solutions, the products, and the uh, the ways we, way we approach things uh, have to change and, and adapt as we move through that change. Now, cloud, everyone talks about cloud. And cloud is an extremely um, important uh, part of the modern IT or uh, information management world. Um, the thing about cloud is it simplifies on some sides, but it adds complexity on other others. So um, there's a much greater demand now for uh, self-service. So if five, maybe even five years ago, uh, or, or maybe a little bit longer, but certainly, uh, certainly uh, five years ago, people would be quite happy to have a product or a tool that they could run. Uh, sort of closely linked to their IT department who are on on premise or even on a on a uh, private cloud system, but basically they will be able to run a a, a, a tool or a product to do the, to do the sort of stuff we're talking about today, the data migrations and so on, um, and they would be able to run that uh, on prem 
uh, closely hooked up to their or closely um, working with their IT and technical teams. Uh, and uh, they wouldn't have any commercial considerations. So they wouldn't worry too much about, you know, whether they're having to go through and get a statement of work, uh, engage technical resources from third parties to do this work. And they're also able to deploy their products, uh, their tools onto those uh, hosted environments. So, uh, you know, if you had an on-premise um, or uh, uh, I say uh, hosted product uh, platforms, I mean, the, the, the core systems content suite itself, that you're able to deploy solutions or sorry, or products. Uh, these days, that's less and less likely to be the case. Um, organizations, when they enter into a cloud-based service, you know, you enter into service level agreements and you have commercial relationships with your third, with your service providers, um, and that, they're not going to give up the ability to be able to manage the availability or the performance of that system very easily. So the the, the, the flexibility you've got in modifying and uh, adding to that hosted environment or that cloud-based system just is, is, is really diluting or disappearing. And, and it's continuing to be the case. It's becoming more and more the case. Certainly when you're adding um, content suite or extended ECM, I should say, to say something like success factors by SAP, um, there's no way in the world you're gonna generally be able to deploy a, a customs or an add-on solution to do the sorts of things that you're we're talking about here. And you're, and you're forced to go into a situation where you have to engage third parties or technical uh, resources from a third party to do but what are really, really simple, or should be fairly simple jobs, uh, tasks. So there's a lot of those things going on um, now. And you also need to be able to ensure that the, the upgrade cycles are much shorter now than they used to be. So, you know, uh, we used to be able to um, hold back an upgrade for 12, 24 months and just stay on a stable version. But that's no longer the case either. We, we've got the situation now where we do quarterly updates and the quarterly updates uh, are essentially um, mandated. Uh, through the commercial, um, you know, sort of uh, arrangements we have, and we lose control over the ability to be able to to say when they can and cannot happen. Um, so, so we need to have products that can be built around modern um, tool, modern methods, modern authentication, modern connection methods, and so on that can adapt and 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 flow, go with the flow on those when, as those upgrades take place. It's really really important. So, so our data transformation um, products. Uh, uh, work around these types of activities that we've been talking about. They work around the, the activities of, of, of updating metadata in bulk, uh, normalizing data. I've got some bullet points here we can talk to, um, but around the sort of things that you would expect to be able to do to your enterprise content uh, uh, content repository on a regular basis and, and not have to go out and go to the market and go and talk to other people, you know, engage third parties to be able to do this. You should be able to sit down at your desk uh, launch an application or launch an interface and 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 bring data in from a, from an external source be it uh, you know a shared drive or maybe um, some sort of host uh, some sort of cloud service like OneDrive or or um, or uh, Dropbox you should be able to bring that into your corporate repository just sitting at your desk as a business as usual activity and that's not an unreasonable expectation uh, and likewise when you're doing large scale migrations whether you're bringing in for example a new business unit or a, uh, a department uh, or you're doing a merger process with another organization, you need to be able to bring that information in uh, again, reasonably uh, quickly and easily. Um, a lot of the times that information's these days with modern, sort of the modern world we live in, that information's highly um, highly decentralized. So you might be able, might be pulling in data from uh, from repositories in Europe into a data center in, in North America, or you know th something similar to that. Um, and you need to be able to do that again, from a central location. You need to be able to sit down at your desk and run a job. And that's what you should be able to do. And you shouldn't have to do it with a lot of technical skills because the people who understand the data um, are generally people who, who don't, they're not um, scripters or, or developers, um, but they need to be able to um, make sure that the system, the process runs cleanly and quickly and that they're given some help in doing that. Um, and lastly, the other thing we find more and more common these days is these systems hold more data um, more and more people actually want to get it out for a bunch of different reasons. So they might want to share it with an external organization. Uh, they might be uh, moving from one platform to another for, for a particular purpose or particular reason. They might have uh, sold off part of the organization. There might be a, 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 a demerger taking place. So they need to be able to get the data out, move it across to the other organization cleanly and quickly. So all these things are things that need to take place in a large organization or even a moderate sized organization when you're when you're responsible for a central repository like Content Suite or Extended ECM. And, and these are not 
things that you would expect to have to go outside of your, your immediate team to do. You should have the tools uh, available. So what Fastbin's about um, is to deal with those issues and to reduce the complexity that comes with cloud. So you need a solution that can be trusted. You need a solution, what we believe, you need a solution that can be trusted, that does these types of, of activities efficiently, um, and that it doesn't need a lot of uh, technical um, you know, overhead. So you shouldn't need to have a group of three or four people to do one person's job. You should be able to do it with one person or one and a half people, whatever the model might be. Um, and you need to uh, be able to do it in a way that can can uh, can work with whatever deployment model you choose for your, for your um, uh, information repository or corporate um, system, your extended ECM or information content suite. So you should be able to do it uh, regardless if you run on cloud, on-prem or in a hybrid model. Uh, you shouldn't have to change uh, the way you do it. And the same tool should work in, in all different scenarios. So if you're moving from an on-premise environment to a cloud environment, you should be able to take the tools with you uh, and that should still work. We, th we think you need a solution we deserve, and you, we des you deserve that. You also deserve um, tools that allow your business to self-service. So we don't think you should have to, um, uh, you know, as I said, I've said a couple of times already, you shouldn't have to go outside your organization to engage people to do what is effectively a business process or business function. Very important. And you get this all from day one. Uh, you shouldn't have to wait six months, three months, you should be able to install the product, get it up and running, and have people productive from day one. Uh, that's really important. So Fastman Content Suite, sorry, Fastman Bulk Data Manager CE Edition has been built on top of the proven solution. If you're familiar with Fastman Bulk Data Manager, it's been around uh, for a number of years, about 10 years. It's always been, um, had a, a very rich client interface. So it's done a lot of what we've been talking about. Um, but it's largely been focused on people who are either running on-prem or who have got control, full control over their uh, hosted system and can run applications in addition to the core platform in that hosted environment. And that's not the case these days with a lot of organizations. So a lot of organizations, particularly as I mentioned the example of success factors before, S4 HANA, if you're running in a, a modern containerized um, managed service environment, you don't have the ability to be able to put um, to put the an extra host or an extra um, uh, component onto that system. You, you need to run it as a as a vanilla uh, off the shelf um, uh, platform, but you still want that functionality that, you, that you're used to doing on on uh, on prem. So, so our CE edition, and you'll notice we we purposely use the term CE because it's in line with open text. It's something that people are familiar with. Um, does it mean Cloud Edition? Oh, I guess it probably does, but we're not going to use Cloud Edition. We're just going to call it CE. And the thing about it is one product. It's not two products. Uh, so you buy, going forward, customers will buy BDM or Bulk Data Manager CE, and they can choose the deployment model. So as it says here, you can run either native or enhanced deployment options. Um, it's the same interface both ways. So it's not going to be a... You know, you're not going to see this is this is, this is what it looks like when you're running in in the uh, the native uh, version, and this is what you're going to be uh, seeing when you run an enhanced deployment model. So that's going to be the same interface, um, same user experience, same skills. And again, if you're moving from an on-prem to a to a cloud, like whether it's the OpenText cloud or it's a a, a third-party one of the hyperscalers, you know, Azure or Google or whatever it might be, if you're making that move, your um, Business users or your your project team, whoever it might be, will continue to use exactly the same product in terms of the your look and feel and functionality as they as they used to. Um, if you are planning on moving to the cloud, it also means that you can do start some of this work beforehand, start cleaning up your data, uh, making changes to the metadata, to the records management side of things. Uh, you can uh, migrate data to the to the uh, to the to the to the, um, to the to the system so that when you do your migration to the cloud it goes with it you don't have to wait till afterwards so so it's transparent and really the, the end user experience is the same so all these things are true and lastly we are as i mentioned before we have improved or extended support for modern common authentication methods so uh, the way in which um, uh, organizations or users authenticate with these systems um, has changed over the years and it's kind of standardized and I'll let David Henshaw talk about that in a bit more detail but it's but we've effectively um, brought it up to date so that it fits in with the modern deployment method 
And before we just hand over to David, let's talk about a few examples that we would use our Bulk Data Manager CE product for. So here's a few um, examples of the sorts of things our customers have used or have and do use uh, BDM for. Some of the functionality, David's gonna do a quick demo of the product, um, but just as a few examples of the sorts of things that we that we have seen and are seeing uh, BDM used for. So obviously the ability to be update, cate update category and attributed data, um, you can do that on one, on several, on many, you can do it on a saved search, you can do it in multiple locations, you can search based on, you know, um, on metadata, you can search based on records management uh, uh, characteristics, you can basically search on anything that you can use the content suite extended ECM advanced search for. And if you wanted to you do that, you produce a list and you can update the attributes on that uh, in bulk or selectively as you go through. Um, you can add versions of files. So if you're doing a, uh, you know, if you're bringing in a repository, sorry, an external repository, say you've got a SharePoint site that you want to bring into Content Suite Extended ECM, that's a, a situation that we've dealt with a bit over the years, um, then you, know, you want to bring the versions of that in as well. So you, you'd use the functionality here to do that. Uh, if you're receiving regular um, data dumps or, or feeds from third parties, external organizations, then you can use the BDM add versions function to be able to do that. And it's quite smart. It'll actually find the files for you in regardless of where they are in the organization. Um, and just like the update of the attributes and categories, uh, you can update records management um, information on both electronic and physical records. There is actually functionality to be able to update uh, physical records as well. Um, there is, there is, uh, that's, that's been in the product from day one. Um, so if you are running, you know, looking after uh, physical records in your, uh, in your system, then you can update some of those, uh, those details through Bulk Data Manager as well. Um, I won't go through the other items here. You've seen them. I've talked about them already. Um, but we are very, we try and do things in a very smart way. So we don't wait till the end of a job before we validate the data, for example, or through, through the process of running it. We'll, we'll pre-validate before we actually get to running the job. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to hand over to David, and David's going to walk you through uh, the actual architecture and deployment models of the product, so that you're able to see uh, just how few changes are made, but how effective they are in making it the, the, the product um, uh, relevant to your your uh, to the modern sort of deployment models that we're working with these days. Um, after that, we'll do a bit of a, a, bit of a summary. So, uh, without any further ado, I'll hand over to David. David. Thanks, Alistair. So. As Alistair has mentioned, we now have two deployment models for BDM CE edition. A native deployment model, which is a zero touch on the open text content suite extended ECM site. So historically, bulk data manager involved deploying some extensions to the open text content suite platform to extend the web services to achieve certain functions. That need has now been alleviated, meaning that you can run the BDM client on premise connected to open text content suite with no need to install any additional code or modules on the content suite side and just relying upon a small settings web service to be run on your on-prem network or on your public cloud connected to your on-prem network for uh, managing all of the bulk data manager uh, settings uh, licenses uh, and user configuration details so this is great for the situations where you're running a Effectively a locked down deployment of content suite with either open text cloud or perhaps uh, if you're a SAP customer running one of the open text SAP uh, extensions and you're on a hosted platform and uh, essentially third party add ons are not permitted on your cloud provider side. Alternatively, for those who are running on prem or running in their own uh, public cloud, easy, easy, uh, for example, Azure. Uh, Amazon, etc. You can continue. You can continue to deploy a lightweight extension on the Open Text side, which extends the Open Text web services and provides some additional functionality uh, to BDM, uh, particularly around things like the the preservation of the the create date and modified date and owner of of records in the the core fields within the Open Text platform. Uh, and also some additional features around some, some functions for really engineering use cases around what we call controlled documents. At this stage, I'd like to do a demonstration of just a couple of small scenarios. 
Uh, as Alistair mentioned earlier, we'll run through an example of, of what we call a load taxonomy. So loading content into content server inclusive of files and folder structure. And I'll then run through an example of using uh, bulk data manager to update metadata on records, demonstrating both the ability to use uh, BDM's browse and select, where you can select content directly from content server, and also using saved searches. So the ability to use a saved search in content server to retrieve records based upon certain search criteria, and then use BDM to update all of the records that match those criteria. So at this stage, we'll launch into a demonstration. So here we have a, a little lightweight uh, open text content suite system. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate bulk data manager in the context of a projects area where I'm running multiple projects and I'm working on, on content. And that content's coming in from various suppliers. And I'm after a very quick and efficient way to, to load that content in, uh, which is our load taxonomy uh, feature or, uh, or our load with attributes. Today I'll be d demonstrating load with taxonomy, which loads files and folders and also update attributes. So after I've done a load, there might be some other processes that are run uh, and I need to come back and update metadata afterwards or category information. So I'll touch on that and run through that using our update attributes, showing two examples with a, a browse where I browse for the content that I wish to update and also showing the use of, of a saved search within content suite. So here's BDM, we're going to run a action load taxonomy. We're going to start a new process. I'm going to select the content that I wish to load in, in my case, some um, demo content. We have some options here around how we're going to treat things in the file path or the file names around uh, a character where we, we can set, and this can be replaced with a, a um, different character if required. I'm using an underscore to represent things like version numbers in my naming conventions on my file share or my network drive, uh, and also how we want to treat the file extension. So in this case, I'm going to turn both of these off, and we'll see that this is saying a document that's named this way will be named exactly the same way during import. I'm asked where I want to load my content into, so in this case I'm going to start in my projects folder. We'll load this into the PNG LNG uh, project workspace, which just for quick reference, presently looks like this. So it has a very simple folder structure in there, and we're going to load directly into that area. BDM has a concept of what we call profiles. Profiles are really like document classes or rules that define how you want to do things with things like categories, classifications during the load. So this is asking me whether I optionally want to in attach a particular category to this content. Uh, this profile could also have been configured to mandatorily enforce this category should be attached to the incoming data. But we'll select it. And this is a very, very simple category, just a single uh, attribute value. And I want to update all of these or load all of these plans in as pending review. So Bulk Data Manager digests the information in the, the file share or the network drive or folder structure that I'm working with. It's deduced that there are this list of files with two folders in the, or two folder levels within the substructure. And it's mapping this data across to a target content server name with a target description. It's looking at who owns this file on the, the shared drive, in this case me. It's going to try and map that ownership to myself in content server as part of the load process. And here's our engineering plan status set to pending review. Um, through this spreadsheet, I can also change some of this information. So I may wish to rename some of these documents to, for example, just simply learner guide one, learner guide two, learner guide three. 
and I could also change if required some of the individual values on the attributes if I wish to. I can set these based upon, in this case, my list of predefined values. I can change my description. When I have all of my metadata in order and I'm ready to, to submit, I can schedule this import for a given time or I can proceed straight away, which is what I will do. Bulk data managers using the open text content web service APIs to create all of the content from my network drive, loading it up into content server. And it will also echo and repeat the folder structure. So the folder structure that I'm loading from had some sub folders. Those folders will also be created if they do not already exist in the target location. So this is a very simple and effective way to quickly get content in where you wish to preserve the structure from a network drive, USB drive, CD, into Open Text Content Suite or extended ECM. Now we have 21 documents all loaded in approximately 46 seconds, around about two documents every uh, or two seconds for every document. Um, so fairly quick, depending on file size and network performance. If we now just jump back quickly to Content Suite and have a look at the results of that. This is my folder structure on the existing project workspace. We loaded directly into here. We're now going to see all of my documents that have been loaded in and some additional folders have been created. And if I drill into those folders, we'll also see necessarily subfolders where the subfolders contained content. So we can see we're echoing the the folder structure from the source data that we imported. And it's that simple to ingest content quickly into Content Suite using BDM's load or Bulk Data Manager's load taxonomy feature. So a common downstream process after loading content, once content's in Content Suite, you may have some workflow processes or other processes that you're doing and then you have a need to bulk update attribute data. So in my load, I loaded all these plans as pending review. Somebody's gone and looked at those documents and reviewed them. And just for reference, I have a saved search in Content Suite of all of the plans that require review. So somebody's run that saved search, looked at all of their plans and updated those. So I think we have about 45 items here that are in that state according to my approximate search result. Now what I'm going to use you do is use Bulk Data Manager to update the metadata on those documents. So from Bulk Data Manager's Actions menu, we can run an Update Attributes. Again, we're going to start a new process. And we're given multiple ways that we can find our content to update. So I can use a search in BDM, in which case I would be presented with a search panel in the the desktop client to conduct a search. I can use a browse and select, in which case I will be asked to find and uh, explore the file structure to find the content that I wish to update, or I can run a saved search. Let's start with the browse and select, in which case I can come through here, I can expand my folder structure, and I might wish to update these documents here. I can select individual documents. I can expand my tree and select sub bits of the tree or uh, the entire tree. But I'm just going to update that set of documents. I'm given some options here whether I want to update, for example, the item description or whether I wish to create an open text collection for use in another uh, process, e.g. E transmittals or for other uh, purposes. We'll just proceed with updating the metadata. This is all pre-configured that I'm saying 
I want to update my engineering plan status. So you'll notice here the user wasn't asked about which category they were going to update. All of that's been pre-configured in the profile so the user only needs to know they need to work with this document profile and your business rules around which categories are updated etc is defined in those profiles so that you ensure consistency of approach. Now I can individually mark my documents so I might wish to say these two are superseded, these two are obsolete and we might mark the last two as current. And again finish and submit our update Again, Bulk Data Manager runs off, uses the open text web services and performs updates of the metadata on that content. You'll see here we've got links to these. Those links would open directly in a browser to the documents. So for example, if I click on one of those links and I just need to change the URL in this case uh, so again if I just sorry different browser copy that URL and paste it in We can see all of our information for the document that I updated and if I look at my categories we now see the plan status was changed from the original load which took place with pending review and is now current. So one of the other options I mentioned was being able to use a saved search for updates within Content Suite. So again we'll do an update attributes and this time I'll use a saved search. And what BDM's presenting to me is a list of all of the saved searches that I have access to in Content Suite. So I can predefine these searches based upon search criteria in the standard open text search interface on Content Suite. I can save those searches, use those within the Content Suite interface, but I can also now run those searches from Bulk Data Manager. So in this case, I'm going to run the plans for review. And we'll notice here I've been given a list of content, all of the items that are in Content Suite that have been marked with my category and with the value set to pending review. I can check all of these and again come in and update all of these plans. And in this case, we'll set these all from pending review to current. Again, the same processes take place. Content Suite is updating the category data via the web services. As part of that process, all of my search and indexing is being updated using the, the standard open text search uh, grid. If we come back now to our content server window, just return to the projects folder where the saved search was stored. Hopefully my search interfaces have updated fairly quickly. If we rerun that search, we'll see that this count has dropped, so my index is still catching up. But over time this number will come down based upon all of the updated items. So that may take a minute or two depending on how often my search is updating the data.
we can check here is if we look at the actual information on that document. The plan status is set to current. So over time as the search grid catches up with its indexing processes, we'll find that those documents all will disappear from the search. So the real benefit here is we can use a consistent saved search defining content server to allow users in content server to look at the content based upon status metadata search terms. They can see that information through the traditional open text interface and then that same search can then be passed to somebody to use in BDM to achieve a bulk update of the information. So now my search grid's caught up and completed. We'll see that we now have no plans presently in a pending review status because they've now moved to current through the update that we perform through BDM. This is extremely useful for, for organizations where you're following some form of workflow process and somebody needs to look at the data in content suite and somebody else needs to bulk update the actual category data to move the documents along through those processes. So that's just a little quick lightweight demonstration of two of the core features of BDM. Uh, there's another set of features around loading uh, versions of content, loading documents directly through what we call load with attributes, which creates the documents but not the structure, uh, and some processes for creating collections through BDM and also what we call stub documents, all of which are, have been covered in some of our earlier webinar series. And with that, I'll hand back to Alistair. Thank you. Okay, thanks, David. That was really interesting. Uh, and as I, uh, we, we said before, we're very excited by this new release of, of BDM, the CE edition. Uh, it's something that we've been working towards for a while. So I think David and his team have done a, an excellent job and, and, uh, and opened up a, a whole new uh, range of opportunities and possibilities for our customers uh, who are operating extended ECM and, and content suite platform in the cloud. Um, and as we mentioned before, one of the main benefits of this for you as a, as a customer is the ability to, to self-service uh, and to make sure that you don't need to incur costs uh, and, uh, and delays in running what are essentially um, business as usual or standard business operational uh, tasks. So, uh, so being able to reduce your wait times, get things done quickly, accurately, uh, and with a reasonable cost is really important to you and your and your uh, your customers, your internal customers. Um, so just quickly before we wrap up, just a quick summarize of where we're at to where we're up to. Um, so uh, we've been 15 years in the business. Uh, we've got operations in North America and Australia, with uh, presence in Asia and Europe, uh, and primarily we do content suite uh, and extended ECM uh, services and and products. That's what we do. Uh, and you've seen us talk about it today, so hopefully uh, you'll see that uh, it's something we're well known for. And we've got customers all around the world who are using our products, both uh, on-premise or in the cloud and in the cloud situation, uh, OpenText Cloud, as well as uh, private cloud or other public cloud um, uh, environments. So just a few examples of customers that we've got um, around the world. So. Um, and we also have a services arm, uh, which in this field is something more and more customers are asking us about. Um, so we uh, do provide services around uh, the data transformation and security um, aspects of your content suite platform environment. Um, and interestingly, in Australia, we're also known for our managed services operating systems on behalf of customers or in conjunction with customers uh, for second and third level support. So uh, very uh, an, an interesting part of our operations that customers often don't know about outside of Australia and New Zealand. Uh, if you would like to make contact with us, please uh, hear our contact details. Uh, please reach out to us whenever you'd like. Um, I'd like to thank David in particular for his contribution today and to his team for bringing this new uh, release of BDM, uh, CE edition to the market. And we look forward to working with you very soon. Thank you very much.